Ready for a refill? Mac, mm -hmm. I have checked and rechecked. I've consulted every source. I've interpreted every single sign. The tarot, crystals, Ouija, runes. I thought you were supposed to be resting. Everything is telling me that the babies are supposed to be born at the Mountain Sunset Inn. All right. Mac, honey, you promised me you were going to check into it. Yeah, I checked into it. I checked on the medical team. Mm -hmm. I checked on the medevac helicopter mm -hmm. to see if it could get you out of the mountain lodge. And? And there is nothing, Luna. There is nothing that is going to make me comfortable with this. Nothing. Where is your fate? Right behind my reason. I'm sorry. There's nothing I can do to pretend that I'm not worried that, some, that a lot of some things could go wrong. I don't care if a midwife is there. Honey, nothing is going to go wrong. I promise you. Mag, can, can we talk about this just for a minute? We've talked and we've talked. There's nothing left to say. Fine, if you want to be close minded about it, well, just fine. Fine. I'm not even going to bring it up again. <laughs> Me either. Fine. That was Mrs. Ogden on the phone just now. Mrs. Who? It seems that you have missed 20 out of the last 30 days of school. Wow. Really? 20? I don't think that could be right. You don't. Cassie, I can explain this. Oh, I'm sure you can, but I doubt it. This is just a terrible misunderstanding. Ah, uh -huh. well, I'll tell you what. I'd like to put him down because he's a little cranky. And then I'm going to be back down here because I'm a little cranky. And I'd like to hear your reason for this terrible misunderstanding. So don't move. Tell me, what are you going to do? Quinn's going to have to get Charles Briggs' name off of here. As of tomorrow, Briggs works for the sun. <laughs> you know, that's going to throw off the whole balance of the, the, the masthead. I mean, they're going to have to redesign the whole thing. Yeah, it's too bad it's not the old days, like when Victor Lord was here. They'd have to change the type and everything. <laughs> well, that's a pretty big coup, stealing the managing editor from the banner. You're huh? impressed, huh? Oh, yeah. Too bad. Well, I have to admit, I got a little bit of help. Who? My big sister. Tina? No, Vicky. Kidding. Yeah, well, she didn't mean to. It just kind of slipped out that Briggs had three girls in college and that he needed the bucks. And she may as well have drawn a circle on his back, a target. <laughs> wow, that doesn't sound like Vicky at all. I would consider it actually an early Christmas gift because I doubt that will ever happen again. Well, if I can get just get Quincy Johnson to jump ship, I'd be on a roll. Hmm. Well, give him some time to think it over. He may still have it. Uh, you know what, that's the last thing I... Well, Todd, where are you going? Uh, you know, the, um... The movies are probably finished unpacking it. Why, why don't you go, uh... Why don't you go settle in? Yeah. Oh, and don't lift anything heavy. I don't want that baby born with a hernia. You still haven't told me where you're going. I just got an idea. I gotta go do something. See you at home later. You just wait until I tell the world what you did to your own daughter. Vicky, what are you doing? Whoop, sorry. You want to throw your father's picture in the trash can? That's up to you. It's none of my business. Sorry. Uh, I know. Wait up, wait up. Um, I thought we settled all this. We're friends. Nothing's none of your business. Well, that's kind of a broad statement, but uh, if you want to tell me about it... Uh... Yeah, absolutely I want to tell you about it. I am totally sick of putting on this act. What act? This act of pretending that my father was so wonderful. He wasn't. He was an absolute monster.
this look horrible? The dress. You know the one. This. Oh. I was going to wear it to the charity ball tonight, but I forget it. I'm not going to go. I'm way too upset. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's, it's David. Can you believe he had the nerve to sneak into my room last night? Yeah. What's with you two? Nothing. All right, what's with you two? Nothing. Yeah, right. Your good friend here has the idiotic notion of giving birth to the twins up at the inn. The Mountain Sunset Inn? I knew that. You want to know why? Uh, I'll tell you why. Yeah. Because her cosmic bag of tricks has told her so. Even though she has high blood pressure, she has miscarried once before in her life, and she's given birth to not one, but two babies. She thinks it's completely all right to be up on some mountain where a medical team can't get to her in less than an hour. I have checked all the signs. All the signs. signs. And they all tell me without a doubt, Tina, without a doubt, that those babies are supposed to be born at the place where every single important event in our lives has taken place. And Clara Ryan, my, wid my midwife, she said it's fine with her. In fact, she's going to be there, but you can't get anything through his thick head. Oh, why shouldn't I be worried about this, huh? Tina, you're a mother. Tell her, this is, this is the most irresponsible, this is the most ridiculous, this is the most dangerous thing to do, to give birth to one baby after another up at some remote well, ski lodge. Tell her. Actually... Go on, tell her. She can handle it. I can't, Max. I agree with Luna. Quincy, is he around? Uh, why don't you go find him? I gotta okay. got turn this in. Sure. Hey, Charlie, here's the piece on the uh, gang shooting over at the community center at Basil Square. Uh, I think you better give this to your dad, Kevin. <laughs> I always turn into you, Charlie. I'm not an employee of the banner anymore. What? I'm leaving today. I didn't realize it was going to be... I mean... Well, I guess Todd Manning doesn't waste any time, huh? Gang intelligence unit, huh? I thought the Landview PD cut that from the budget. Who told you that? Am I wrong? Seeing as gang activities on the rise, apparently unnoticed by the cops. Wait, wait. We doubled our patrol around the Angel Square area. <laughs> hey, this is a tough nut to crack. Actually... I was hoping I could read that series that you wrote on gang activity in the Tri-State, you know, a little homework for the rookie. Yeah, I'll take you into the morgue. i even point you to the right bank of file cabinets. Gee, Quincy, you're too kind. How come they got you assigned to gang investigation anyway? I mean, what, are they planning on sending you in undercover as a 12-year-old white cheerleader? Quit. I'm shocked. <laughs> Shocked at this kind of stereotyping. I mean, you mean to tell me that you don't think, Quincy, that with a little makeup I couldn't be convincing as a six foot two Latino drug lord? Right. I'll get you a soapbox you can stand <laughs> on so you can reach the high file doors. <laughs> hey, Quincy. Glad to see you're still here, man. Uh, I guess that means you didn't take Todd Manning's job offer. Now, listen, I know it's a lot more money, but it is not the right thing to do. I'm telling you, I know Todd Manning a lot better than. A lot better than I wish I did. And I'm telling you, he's not the kind of guy you want holding your weekly paycheck. Well, thanks for the warning, Kevin, but I haven't made my decision yet. Come on, I'll show you those articles. Sit down, please. You, you know how much I have always loved my father. I know. That's why I was more than a little surprised when I... Heard you calling him names and saw you through his picture in the trash can. And you know I've always defended him, right? Yes, you certainly have. Yeah. Despite all his flaws, of which there have been many, I mean, you turn over a rock, you find another messy secret. I have always been loyal to him. And now? Now, I am so angry with him. And I realize that I can't just keep pushing this anger down. As, as if it would just go away. It is not going to go away. There have been too many insults, too many sins. And quite frankly, I'm sick of forgiving him. I mean, I don't condone what he did. Why do I have to forgive him? And now this last thing? What, Todd Manning? Yeah, another bastard son, and this one he didn't even acknowledge. 
boy, oh boy, is Todd Manning, his father's son. Coming in here trying to steal away our reporters for his newspaper, The Sun. Exactly the way my father went and raided other newspapers to staff the bathroom. Well, yes, Vicky, but still, I mean, throwing your father's picture in a, in a trash can? I mean, what was it? What was the last straw that pushed you to this point? Uh, losing Briggs? Yeah. He came in here a little while ago to say goodbye. Thirty years he was here. And we're acting as if he's just being disrespectful of Father's memory. And he's not, actually. He's honoring it. He doesn't even know it. Look, Todd Manning's exactly what my father made him, whether he knew it or not. And Briggs, in going to work for, for, for Todd, is, is really just... Still serving Victor Lord. So I guess I just sort of snapped and <laughs> took it out of the picture. Want it back? I'll think about it. <laughs> I'll decide later. I'll look at it. Well, whatever. It's uh, kind of nice to see the old fire back in your eyes. I've missed that. I have to tell you, I. Uh, I just thank God that our friendship has survived all this. And that really is completely due to you, because <laughs> I know that I have not exactly been a joy to be around the past couple of months. All the more reason for an old friend to be around. I mean it, Clint. Thank you very, very much. And I think that this miserable black mood that I've been in is finally going away now, too. I think there's a definite change in the weather. Well, I'm glad to hear it. I just feel so much better. I feel like I can breathe again. I haven't felt like it's good in ages. If you're going to throw this picture out, can I have it? What do you want, Manny? I came to talk to Quincy. On banner time? But first, I thought I'd stop by and say hello to my favorite sister. Our family ties do not entitle you to simply walk into my office unannounced any time you want. Well, forgive me. I'm just a humble bastard. I'm new to the ways of the lordly family. Knock it off. Manning, you don't have any business here. Now, if you want to make offers to the Banner employees, do it on their time and on your own turf. Don't come around here waving a fistful of cash in one hand and a bunch of fat contracts in the other. Fine. But Quincy's off in about two minutes. So I think I'll stick around. Tick tock. I hate it when he comes around here. You handled him very well. Got to admit, he's got nerve. Yes, among other things. I'll take care of him. I don't want him on the premises. Oh, oh, Cheryl. Excuse me. Uh, Mr. Buchanan, you have a call on line five? Oh. Hi, Cheryl. You can take it in here. I'll leave it in your privacy. Don't be silly. You don't have to leave. Yeah, Buchanan. Yeah. Well, yes, I'm interested. You picked a time. Ten o'clock? Pier 16. Bet on it. I'll be there. Well, that sounds like one heck of a scoop. And it just fell into our laps. Renee, hello. You know everything is just going to be so beautiful here. You know, I just found out about the charity ball tonight, and I wish I had known about it since Todd and I are starting our businesses up. We would love to be here, you know, to be in touch with the community and all, you know. Yes, yes indeed. <laughs> Matthew's finest will be here this evening. Uh, how can we get a ticket? I'm sorry. The ball is by invitation only. Well, Renee, I'm sure something can be arranged. Are you suggesting that you'll pay more than the price of the ticket? <laughs> there. There are some things that manning money can't buy. You and Todd aren't invited. And you 
Chris and I just figured it all out. Did you? Yeah. Like I said, this is obviously all a mistake. Really? The assistant principal called you about my absences, but she really meant to call the other Kelly Kramer's parents. See, I mean, there's two of us at Landview High. <laughs> what are the odds? Anyway, they must have gotten me mixed up with the other Kelly Kramer. Right, Jessica? Just right? Um, it's all right, Jesse. Don't bother trying to cover for Kelly. There's no doubt that Mrs. Ogden was referring to this Kelly Kramer, the one who lives with her cousins, the Carpenters. You sure? I'm sure. Mm -hmm. So you're going to tell me why you did 20 out of the last 30 days of school? If you weren't there, then where in God's name were you? The park. Video store. A couple times I hopped the train to Philadelphia to mm. hang out on South Street. You went to Philadelphia alone? I'm not a child. I had escaped from this place somehow. Got a place must drive you nuts. Kelly, you're supposed to be in class. Look, I am light years ahead of those kids. And besides, book learning doesn't mean a blessed thing. Light is what counts. And don't you understand? Jesse, did you know that Kelly was cutting classes? You backed up with this lie. Jesse, I'm really surprised with you. Oh, don't let her guilt you into feeling bad. You do realize, of course, that you weren't doing Kelly any favors. Yeah, I know. Jesse, I need to speak with Kelly alone. Sure. It's been a very difficult time in our lives, Andrews and mine. Well, it hasn't exactly been a party for me, you well, know. Well, we have tried our best to accommodate you. Now, I know that you're not happy with those accommodations, but they're the best we can do. You have to remember, you were sort of a surprise house guest. <laughs> I am so sorry to be such a burden. That's not the point, and you know it. You are not a burden unless you make yourself one. Now, Kelly, I know that you're not happy here, but we're trying to do the right thing for you. And all you do is lie and cut classes and impersonate me. So what am I supposed to do? I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry, too, but that doesn't help. You've lied to me probably more times than you've told me the truth about anything. Now, I want to know what's going on here. And don't think that you can get out of it this time because there isn't any way. Both of my babies were born in very unconventional places mm -hmm. and in very unconventional ways. Good God, Cora delivered Sarah, and both of my kids are just fine. Oh, maybe I should just tie Luna up, throw over a waterfall, let her give birth in a primitive hut. It worked for you and CJ. I'm trying to avoid that sort of situation, Tina. Look, but if the No! Try to understand. You don't hear what I'm saying. I gave up gambling. I don't take chances anymore. You're going to have these babies in a nice, conventional hospital so these babies can both be... Good and safe, and I can have a good and safe Luna. How can I make you see that? How can I make you see that what you want to do is making a big mistake? How can I make you see that what you want is making a big mistake? Oh, for... Hey, 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 missus. The only reason he's being so annoying is because he loves you so much. Yeah. Wish we could come to some sort of compromise with this. But this is bigger than the both of us. It's meant to be. It's written in the stars. You're really serious about this? You bet I am. And Max better get ready because I am not giving in. That was Frank Valpone. Oh, your own personal deep throat. Well, I wouldn't go exaggerating his credentials, but uh, he has been known to be reliable. Are you kidding? A lot more than that. He gives the Spangler story, remember? Yes, along with about a dozen others. Yeah. But he only talks to you. Well, he, uh, he would talk to somebody that he knew worked with me. I know he'd love to talk to you. Oh, yeah, thanks a lot. <laughs> he only wants to meet in these godforsaken back alleys and down on the docks like tonight. No, thank you very much. What did you say it was about? He said he had some information on how the kids down in Angel Square were getting their guns. 
he said it was uh, very surprising. Now, very surprising usually means about a hundred bucks. You think it'll be worth it? Has been in the past. Mm. And it would be a heck of a scoop. Mm, big, yeah. You gonna see him tonight? Mm-hmm. Pier 16, 10 o'clock. Packing up, huh? I'll see you first thing tomorrow morning. I think your new offices are gonna be a lot nicer than this wet shop. Hey, Quince. Time's up. Do we have to do this here? Yep, I need an answer. Do you want to be the senior editor of The Sun or not? What the hell are you doing here, Todd? And I hope it's not because Quincy accepted your offer. Because he is much too good a newsman to work at some rag like yours. Well? Todd, do your business someplace else. Never mind the high and mighty Buchanan faction. They like to throw their birth right around. So, what's it gonna be? You're gonna stay here. Or you're gonna move over to the sun for twice as much money and twice as much power. It's a great offer you made me. Savannah's my home. These people are like my family. So, I'm staying home. <laughs> You're saying no to me. Well, you win some, you lose some. Isn't that right, Charlie? I hope you can find somebody to fill the position. Oh, don't worry, that won't be hard. There's a million people that would jump at the chance that you just threw away. Todd, your business is done here. Please leave. Buy you a drink, Charlie? I'm sorry it worked out like this. Look, don't even mention it, Briggs. Man's got to do what a man's got to do. I'll be with you in a minute. I told you uh, to take your business out of here. Excuse me, Mr. Buchanan. Mr. Harrelson's waiting in your office. Thank you, Cheryl. Todd, I mean it. When I get back, don't be here. Fuck off. This is Manning. I got a hot tip for you, Mr. Manning. Forget it. I don't even have an explanation. Except. I can't go back to that school. I don't belong. I never will. So put the chains on, send me out to sea, tie me to the bumper of your car, and drag me Sally. through the streets. You know, I wasn't exactly the biggest fan of school. But is it really that bad? You have no idea how bad it is. And how I don't belong. Well, I realize that it's been a difficult transition, but I can't imagine that these... Yeah. I know this is going to sound incredibly arrogant, but I'm better than them. They have puritanical views and hermetically sealed minds. You're it's right. Just, uh, it does sound incredibly arrogant. The only one who really likes me is Jessica Buchanan. She's just a sophomore. Well, I'm glad that you realize that. And because she is so young, she is very impressionable. 
Well, thank God someone's impressed with me. Those kids at that school, they stare at me like I'm from Alpha Centauri. God, we just, we don't speak the same language, we don't wear the same clothes. I'm surprised we have the same number of fingers on each hand. Callie, I don't want you to think that I don't realize how hard it is to switch schools in the middle of your senior year. Especially when, up until now, you have been in European boarding schools. Yeah, talk about culture shock. A and I'm sure that you must feel incredibly lonely sometimes. With all your friends in France, and living with a family that you hardly know. But try to take some responsibility for the position that you're in. I do! I got kicked out of comment school for what I did. And that's why I'm here in Purgatory USA. No, it's not just that, Kelly. Try to see it from the other side. Try to, try to see it how the kids from Landview High see you. What's wrong with the way I look? There's nothing wrong with the way that you look, as long as you don't mind standing out in a crowd. But you're saying to me that you don't want to feel conspicuous. Yet everything you choose to do makes you do just that. You dress to be noticed. You tell wild stories. You talk about... You know, I know. You don't approve of me. And I know that you don't respect me for who I am. But that's cool, because I don't care. I am not going back to that salt mine. Never. Forget it. Kelly, you are going back to that school, and you're going to make up all of the work that you have missed this semester. And that is the last word on this subject. Why don't you just take me out and shoot me? Hmm? Instead of killing me like this, inch by inch. Whoa! Oh, get out of my way. Don't tell me. Let me guess. You're my cousin, Kelly. <laughs> who are you? Well, who are you? Well, it's nice to meet you, too. <laughs> to your cousin Blair, Kelly. Oh. Ah. <laughs> hey, Kelly. Well, I hope that I'm not interrupting anything too uh, thrilling, but I just came by because I want to know if you had extra tickets to the charity ball tonight. <laughs> oh, there may be one. Oh, great. That is, unless Kelly does something about her true intendencies. She's missed a great deal of school lately. So, Kelly, let me get a look at you. Oh, my gosh. You are so beautiful. You really do favor your mother, Melinda, you know. Thanks. Too bad Cassie's trying to drive me nuts, too. And I tell you what, you... Uh, I love the way you dress. You do? Oh, yes. It really shows that you have very... A great sense of style, very original, and I'll tell you what, very daring. <laughs> <laughs> My God! Finally, someone of legal age to, who understands me. Hey. What? Uh, I heard you have a cosmetic company. Do you do clothes? Well, not yet, but someday, hopefully, yes. Well, I, I, I could work with you. I could quit school and be your Excuse signature me. model. Don't even think about <laughs> it. Wait a minute. I don't quite need a signature model yet. But uh, there may be a job opening for you someday soon. That is, if you do as your... Your cousin here says, and get your fanny back in school, girl. Well, at least I'll have something to look forward to while I endure my imprisonment in the village of the damned. <laughs> not that funny. No, Kelly, please. Believe me, I know, okay? We will talk later. But I have got to get going because I've got to scrounge my... and get a couple of tickets. Well, economy to the charity ball tonight. Can't you just buy them? No. It is invitation only. Well, why would you want to subject yourself to this thing tonight? <sighs> Cassie, if Todd and I are going to make a mark on this town tonight, is the best time. See ya. Bye, Kelly. <sighs>
Uh, Who are you? Uh, Let's go, Briggs. Get ready to break the sun's first major story. You are so lucky to have Max. He loves you so much, Luna. I know. Is that why he's trying to drive me berserk? It's because he loves you. That's just how Max does things. Does that make you think that David really loves you? No. David's different. The only reason he's saying he loves me is so he can get me to have an affair with him. No. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I threw him out the window again. You what? Yeah. But, well, he's fine. He just, he got up and he hobbled away. Kind of bent over. Well, at least you're not trusting him again. Even though that, that reaction was a little severe. You know what? Put that weasel right out of your mind. Put that pretty party dress on, go to that charity bash, and you have a great time. By myself? Well, you got other friends who are going to be there, don't you? All right, I'll go, and I'll try to have a good time by myself. Unless, of course, you'd rather me stay, and I'll, I'll keep you company. No, honey, I, I think all I want to do right now is go to the inn and, and, and wait for these babies to be born. i got to tell you, honey, every molecule, every bone in my body, every cell is telling me that it is the right thing to do. How beautiful they are. This time of the year. They're blooming. The birds are chirping. And they're teaching their young little birds to fly. Tina, I want my babies to be born there. Where every minute is about new life and new beginnings. Maybe there's a way. Maybe there's a way we can both have what we want. I will not take you up to the lodge. That would not be right. But I can bring the lodge here to you. Hear me out here, okay? I can go up there. I can load up all the things I get my hands on. I can, I can bring back daffodils and tulips and quilts, maybe even a couple of trees. Trees. And maybe some of the magic of the lodge along with it. Oh, that's real sweet of you, honey. Thank you. Now, let's go do it right now under two conditions. One, in that you stay in this bed and you get plenty of rest, just like the doctor and midwife said. Where am I going to go? Knowing you roller derby. <laughs> the second is that, Tina, you stay here and you watch over her just in case of an emergency. You can even bring CJ and Sarah over here. You know how much I love it when they come visit. So, anyway... Well, I, that's fine by me, Lena. Okay. Great. Well, I'll go get ready. I think that's the best you're going to get. Oh, no, it's not. I am not having anything come between me and my baby's destinies. I'm going to that lodge. What? No, I, I just promised Max he's going to kill me. He is not going to, he won't do any such a thing. Because he is going to understand that this is the right thing. This is the only thing. And you're going to help me. <laughs> Look, if this is a charity event, then why wouldn't you sell extra tickets that you... Well, that doesn't sound very charitable to me. Just fine. <laughs> this is it. A 
tonight's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. What's that about? What? Well, that tone of voice, you know, the one that says it's going to be a lot of fun, but it sounds like it might be a public execution. But I guess I just, I don't, don't have anything to wear, if that's all. Come on. I have seen you wear clothes. I mean anything that everybody hasn't already seen me in. So? So I, I formal stuff like this is just, it isn't my thing, you know? Well, what, you, you think it's mine? <laughs> What's the problem? I, it's just, I, Come on, what does it matter? Kevin, I just, I, I feel more like myself in, in my uniform these days, that's all. Well, then it's just lucky for all of us that you happen to look gorgeous in whatever you wear. Kevin, come on, don't joke about stuff like this. What are you talking about? I'm not joking. Gorgeous? I mean, don't you think that's just a little overboard? I mean, on a good day, I just barely even make presentable. Andy, you look beautiful. <laughs> you really are. Oh. Mm. <laughs> I'll tell you what. How about you and me go get decked out for that ball, Cinderella? Hmm? Come here, come here, come here, come here. Huh? Well, thank you. Yeah, yes. Quincy, turn him down. Sorry. Todd Manning? Well, Quincy turned him down, said he'd rather stay right here at the Banner. Oh! Oh, that's wonderful! I'm so glad! Well, things are looking up around here, finally. Yes. Hey, did you tell Mom the good news yet? Just finished. Yeah. I'll bet you're relieved, huh? Oh, I certainly am. Hi, Andy. Hi. Are we to see you two at the uh, charity ball tonight? Uh, doggone, that is tonight, isn't it? Uh, no, I got a lead on a good story, and I've really got to follow it up. Oh, it's a very promising one, too. Yeah, I uh, already bought a ticket, but then uh, I wasn't really planning on going because, um, well, a function like that is no fun to go to alone. You know something? I wasn't looking forward to going to this thing alone, either. Why don't we do go together, huh? I mean, we were going to have dinner anyway. Let's just make it very early, and then you can still make your meeting with your source. Hey, that is a, that's a great idea, Mom. And Annie and I are going to go. We could, we could make it a foursome. Oh, yeah. Come on, Dad. Just uh, nod. Just say yes. All right, yeah. <laughs> That's great. That's great. Okay, we'll see you guys there. Oh, okay, bye. Okay, bye. See you later. Bye. Are you sure you're up to it? What? Well, I mean, it's been a long time since we've been seen together socially. Is that a problem for you? Me? No, I thought that you might. Uh... Oh, no. No, no. Not only is that not a problem for me, I'm really looking forward to it. 